So in this video, we are going to go over one of the easiest mods you can perform on a guitar pedal, which is adding parallel resistors. This modification can be underestimated because of its simplicity, but when you see what things on a circuit you're able to modify by doing this, you'll see why this is a good modification to know. So let's first take a look at what soldering a resistor in parallel will look like with a through-hole guitar pedal, as well as a guitar pedal with surface mount components. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do a quick parallel resistor solder up. Bend the resistor leg, doesn't matter which one, at a 90 degree. And cut it off kind of close. And let's see if we can do this in shot. This is kind of tricky to do when you're trying to camera the thing, but I'm going to tin the leg here that we want to parallel this guy up to. As you can see right here, we got a Set a 90 degree bend, and then we're just going to heat that joint up until it solders in just like so. If you do it quick enough and, and precise enough, hopefully, as long as the resistance isn't very low, you can not burn your hand holding it like that. Otherwise, you'll want to use tweezers for obvious reasons. And then we'll just take this guy right here, and then we'll bend him into the leg. And this may break the solder joint sometimes, so you gotta be a little bit more careful about doing that. But then you can always go back in here and re-solder. So we'll just attach right there. Oops, not quite. And there we go. A parallel solder joint. Well, parallel resistor soldered up with through hole. So we'll go back at the schematic and see what's going on right there. But now the trickier ones to do are the surface mount guys. Because as you can see here, the chips on here are kind of tiny, but it's not impossible to do this. So we're going to put a parallel resistor here to R7 on this guy. And the idea is similar. What you're going to do here is you're going to bend it in like you're trying to make a triangle or closer actually probably to a trapezoid. And the idea here is you're going to do basically something akin to this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to tin the top pad of the resistor here. And thankfully, I know how those enclosures rig, so this will actually fit. Sticking out like that. And yeah, this one's kind of not one to grab. Oh no, it got grabbed. And so there you go. You have a parallel resistor there. Now, one thing you could do with this setup, assuming your solder is strong enough. As you kind of lift it up like that, and now it fits in the enclosure. So this right here is another example of doing a parallel resistor mod. But now let's see why we can do this and what the results of doing things like this even is. All right. Now that we see what we are physically doing to our PCBs inside our guitar pedals, let's get an understanding of what we're doing. When we add resistors in parallel, we are stacking them on top of each other. The effect of doing this is that we increase the amount of power that can go through them, but at the cost of reducing resistance. Typically, with guitar pedals, we use quarter watt resistors, so if we put two in parallel, we'll have a half watt resistor, but the amount of resistance will drop. So how much does it drop? 
Well, if the resistor you are adding is in parallel with the same value of the one you're putting it in parallel with, the resistance is halved. So, if you put a 1K resistor in parallel with another 1K resistor, the resistance will be 500 ohms. If the values of the resistors are different and there are only two of them, you can use this equation that's on the screen. As you add more resistors and ones of differing values, calculating parallel resistance gets more complicated. But thankfully, there are websites out there that have free parallel resistance calculators on them. I recommend this one right here from allaboutcircuits.com. I'll include a link of that in the description below. Okay, so now we know what parallel resistance is and how to calculate it. So what can I do with this? Well, as resistance is a critical part of almost all guitar pedals out there, you can do a lot. The only limitation with parallel resistance is that it can only drop the resistance value, not raise it. But this isn't much of a limitation, so let's see what things we can do. As resistance affects the gain stages of pedals, parallel resistors can be used to increase or decrease gain. Here we have the Pumpkin Pie schematic, which is based off of the op amp Big Muff Pie. And we have two op amp stages here that we're going to look at. One right here is a non-inverting op amp, and one right here is an inverting op amp. Now the inverting op amp one will be really easy to change. If we wanted to increase the gain of this stage, we could add a parallel resistor right here and reduce the value of R2. If we wanted to reduce the gain of this stage, we could add a parallel resistor here to R3, and that would reduce the gain overall when adding that parallel resistor. Over here, we have a non-inverting op amp. If we were to add a parallel resistor to R6 and reduce that resistance, it would reduce the gain. However, if we were to add a parallel resistor here to R7, that would increase the gain of this stage. Resistance is also crucial in tone stacks. Wherever you have an RC filter, adjusting resistance will always affect the tone. To see what I mean, I am on the Okawa Denshi filter calculator website. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Here we have a low pass filter where the signal comes in through this resistor and then passes over this coupling capacitor which is coupled to ground. If we had a 100k resistor right here, and a one nanofarad capacitor. This right here will cut off frequencies above close to 1.6 kilohertz. And so this is kind of a tone stack element that you'll find in a lot of guitar pedal schematics. But let's just say we wanted to bring in more high frequencies. If we had a parallel resistor right here, say with another 100K resistor, that would reduce the resistance in half, making it a 50K resistance right there and now we bring in more high frequencies where the cutoff frequency for the highs are now closer to uh, 3.2 kilohertz, we'll just say. This also works with high pass filters as well, so let's check that out. We go over here to high pass filters. Uh, what you would see in an RC filter that's high pass is our signal goes through this capacitor and then leaves going over this resistor here that's bleeding to ground. So in this example, let's put in a 100K resistor for our resistance and a 100 nanofarad capacitor for our capacitance. As you can see here, our signal will cut out frequencies that are under 16 hertz, very bassy frequencies. However, if we find out that that's too much bass being allowed into our signal and we want to cut some of it out to make our signal less muddy, if we were to put a parallel resistor right here of a 12k resistor, that would reduce the total resistance close to 10k. So if we change that out, you'll notice now that our signal is going to cut out base frequencies of 160 hertz and below, making our signal less muddy. One thing to be warned about though is when adding parallel resistance to high pass filters like this is the less resistance going to ground right here, the more volume of the whole signal in general will be reduced. So make sure that your gain stage following this takes that into consideration. Another example of tone manipulation is that of a gyrator EQ. We discussed these in our How Do EQs Pedal Work, link in the description below, but even here, changing the resistance values of these circuits will affect the frequency as well as the Q on these circuits. So here we're on Jack Orman's gyrator filter calculator site, and you can play around with these values, but in this example right here, we're manipulating a 90 hertz cut boost EQ, and let's just say that's a little too low, so if we were to put a parallel resistor here, this 100K resistor, 
If we put another 100k there, that would reduce the resistance to 50k. And if we put a parallel resistor here on R2, which is 1k right now, we put another 1k right there in parallel with it, that'll reduce the resistance to 500 ohms. So now we've taken our 90 hertz EQ and changed it up to 180 hertz. So as you can see, another useful area where modifying with just simple parallel resistors can change our tone stack. Lastly, you can affect specifics of a circuit, such as oscillators and phase shifters, by adding or subtracting to your favorite modulation effects sweeper range. Here we have the Lich King Chorus as an example, but you can find this kind of oscillator in a lot of circuits, typically choruses and flangers, but sometimes you'll see them in vibratos and tremolo pedals as well. But if you have the uh, classic dual op amp with a rate and a depth knob, if you mess around with these resistance values by adding parallel resistors, you can change how that LFO functions. So hopefully, now you see that just adding a resistor in parallel to your pedals here and there can be such a noteworthy modification, and it can take a pedal that doesn't sound quite right and make it your own. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you like these kind of videos, press that like button, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you want to get notifications from when we update our channel, press that bell icon, and also, don't forget to comment below. We'd like to know if there are any noteworthy modifications that you folks like that has involved just simply changing a resistor value on one of your pedals. Also, don't forget to check out our site, which is www.diyguitarpedals.com.au, and look into our PCB kits and parts, as that helps us keep this channel going. So, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.